We ain't done talking about big books featuring Cap, baby. That's right. Today, we're taking an advanced look at the Captain America by Dan Jurgens Omnibus from Marvel Comics coming out this week. So, stay tuned. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on August 4th and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. And speaking of direct market, that's what we're looking at here, the direct market cover by Gene Ha. On the left hand side, that is your standard edition cover by the phenomenal Dan Jurgens. Not that Gene Ha is not phenomenal, but this does have Dan Jurgens' name on the title. So let's get back to this. So here's the cover, the spine, which if you notice, the font is not on black. Actually, this is a lighter gray tone to it. And there's an image of Cap down there. And then the back of the book featuring all the covers that are collected in here. I have some really good news for the people that have been asking me. Will Marvel add a couple more issues to make it complete? They did. We'll get to that here in a second. But first, I wanted to look at this to see what it looks like with the other oversized hardcover collections, the Omnibus editions. So this immediately takes place right after Captain America by Mark Wade, and it takes place before Ed Brubaker. Now, there is another volume that would be awesome to collect here that takes place right after Dan Jurgen's run, but we can talk about that a little bit later when we're actually talking about the stories contained in here. Before we start talking about the stories contained in here, let's look at it under the dust jacket. And there's the image that you have from the standard edition cover. This right here, of course, by Dan Jurgen's. The spine looking a little bit different. In fact, the font is on black this time around. Then you have the logo right there. And then another image of Cap and his arch nemesis, the Red Skull. Now, let's get this open and talk about the stories contained in here. Let's go ahead and crack this open. We have some blue bookend pages. Very patriotic, very Captain America. And there he is right there. So here are your credits. All the creators that help write. Pencil, ink, color, letter. Everyone is on here. And it kicks off with Captain America 25. And I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, Omar. You told me that this contained everything following Mark Wade's run. It does. So the initial solicits of this were Captain America 25 through 50, Captain America Annuals 2000 and 2001, and then they included the legend. However, at the end, they did include Captain America and Citizen V Annual 1998, Captain America Annual 1999, Hells Yes, and Captain America number 24. So those are in the back, but because this is a Dan Jurgens collection, it kicks off with Dan Jurgens name at the very beginning. So we kick it off with issue 25, which is the anniversary issue, which also showcases the return of a beloved Marvel character that had been gone for a little while. And I guess if you're flipping through here, that is this shirtless dude right there, Nick Fury. To find out where he had been, well, that's a whole different story for a whole different type of video. And one thing you probably notice is the art. So the art at first is supplied by Andy Kubert. Uh, the inks are done by Dan Green. Dan Green had worked with Big John Buscema. He's worked with Mark Silvestri in the past. So it's nice to see him do a collab with Andy Kubert. As a matter of fact, he's the main inker on Andy Kubert's run until Andy leaves. And we have the return of characters. Now, is this the original hate monger? Well, you can find out by reading the book. I don't spoil things on here. I try not to spoil. If I ever talk about any even minor spoilers, I try to let people know ahead of time. So, we have Dan Green inking. There's a really cool issue here where, yes, right here, even though we have talking dinosaurs, don't care, in the Savage Land, Andy Kubert's art is inked by his father, Joe Kubert. The phenomenal, legendary Joe Kubert lends some of his inks in here to his son's pencils. So, yes, there are talking dinosaurs. There's the Savage Land. We have actually, this is awesome. We have Brent Anderson do a fill in issue right here. And mainly it's. Andy Kubert. Up until, oh yes, we also have Connie. Connie comes back. Connie uh, Ferrari, who was introduced in the pages of Mark Waite's run. So, uh, Jerry Ordway lends his pencils here for this flashback issue. What, what is this series about? So what is Dan Jurgens' run about? That's, I'm sure that's one of the biggest questions I'm going to get and one that I've gotten. Uh, where would I rank this? And that's an unfair thing to, to do because, I mean, when you're ranking it up against Ed Brubaker or Mark Waite, it's tough. I don't care who it is that's writing it. The best way I can put this particular run, and I'll talk a little about this character here in a few minutes, is that this takes you back to the pre-90s 
storytelling of Captain America. This goes, Dan Jurgens does something uh, that a lot of writers have done in the past, but it, he writes Captain America as a man out of time, as an old man trapped in a young man's body. As a matter of fact, the stories are, I don't, I don't mean to be offensive, but they're kind of basic. They're good guy versus bad guy. Captain America is always stopping a group of Hydra agents, a group of AIM agents. He's stopping the Red Skull. He's stopping the Hate Monger. He's fighting the Taskmaster. You know, it's a lot different. So if you're thinking this is going to be something like Brubaker's espionage type of storytelling or Mark Waite's deep focus on what separates man from country, it's different than that. And there's nothing wrong with that, because this is the stuff that I loved growing up with. This is the stuff, if anything, this feels more like reading a Mark Grunewald run on Captain America, and that's kind of what I wish they would collect next, is the Mark Grunewald stuff in omnibus format. So, something you probably notice is that Dan Jurgens takes over the art duties. So after Andy Kubert leaves, so Andy Kubert is only there for just about seven issues or so, and then Dan Jurgens says, you know what, I'm going to draw a cap. Uh, Art Tebert lends his inks at first, but then we get the legendary Bob Layton. There's a lot of legendary people here. That's why maybe this includes Captain America the Legend. Ha! Oh my god, I'm turning into a father. I mean, I am, but I never told dad jokes. That's not me. Anyway, where the hell was I? Yes, uh, Bob Layton lends his inks. And it's, I don't know, I really like Jurgen's art with Bob Layton. Now, he's worked with Andy Cooper, uh, Dan Jurgens has before. He's worked with, of course, uh, Jerry Ordway in the pages of Superman. And pretty much anybody he teamed up with, he had worked in the past. So during this time, he's also writing Thor, if you remember his run. That's the Hero's Return era. So all of this takes place right after Mark Waid's return to Captain America. So there was Heroes Reborn after Onslaught, then Heroes Return Captain America, which is Mark Waid's run. His omnibus is split up kind of weird, and if they ever reprint it, I'll do an overview of how exactly to read that particular book. Mephisto makes an appearance. And this takes place immediately after that, with issue 24, which we'll get to here in the back. Now, what I said, there's a missing book in between this. It's not really missing if you get trade paperbacks. All that stories are available in trade paperback. But after issue 50 that is collected in here, we get to what is known as Volume 4 of Captain America by John... Uh, Niebuhr, and it's got artwork by John Cassidy. However, they change up the story of Cap. That's a little more edgy. It's, it's Marvel Knights. They change it to a Marvel Knights book. And uh, Batra comes back. This is more about classic superhero storytelling. I mean, it's Stan Jurgens. It's the guy that wrote Superman. It's the guy that wrote Spider-Man. He knows how to write superheroes. And of course, Booster Gold, which is up there near perfection, at least in my eyes. I love Booster Gold. I said I would come back and talk about this guy, and I'm keeping my word. So this is not prototype, this is proto-side. The idea of a project before Captain America had always been there. He, you know, Dan Jurgens isn't the first to touch up upon it, but he does create this character of this rogue warrior, this soldier that has gone bad because the experiments went wrong, and He's supposed to predate Captain America. So that's what this long story arc really is, because he sets this character up in the second issue that he's writing and doesn't really wrap up that storyline until about a year and a half or so later. So you see the character being set up slowly. You know, he has dealings with Sharon Carter. Uh, he kicks the crap out of U.S. Agent. So he's always lingering in the background until the big fight with Steve. And I like that. See what I mean by basic superheroics kind of storytelling? exactly what I'm talking about. So there are several stories in here. He wraps up uh, some of the things that he started at the beginning with Hatemonger, brings it back with this story. This collection does have issue 50. And I need to talk about issue 50 really quick, and it's going to be a little difficult without giving spoilers. But for anybody that has read it, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. Number one, Ignacio Calero's take on the Red Skull is one of the freakiest takes I've ever seen. He reminds me of a character out of uh, Berserk. Just the way he draws him, it's really creepy. I remember reading this the first time in the middle of the night years ago, and I was like, what the hell is that? Anyway, or something out of a uh, David Lynch movie. But his artwork for the main part, like, it, he just draws a little bit. It always reminded me of something like Ryan Benjamin or Travis Charis. Uh, somebody that's trying to mimic Jim Lee, but has his own little spin on it. I don't know. I really dug it. I don't know what else he ended up doing. Hopefully he's still drawing comics, but yeah. See what I mean by Jim Lee and Travis Charis, Ryan Benjamin, that type of art. But his Red Skull is freaky. That's nightmare fuel right there. All right, but issue 50 does do something interesting that nobody really talks about. 
Issue 50 kind of puts a bookend to all, not just Dan Jurgen's story, but also Steve Rogers' Captain America. For anybody that has read it, you know, after this, there's the volume four that I was talking about with uh, John Cassidy on artwork. They never really acknowledge the fact what happened in issue 50 here. And I know I'm speaking in code, but you'll see what I mean if you uh, when you read the book without giving spoilers away. It's just something, it's like a part of Marvel's history, Captain America's history that nobody really talks about. And I was wondering if it was ever resolved anywhere. Because I did a big read-through of Captain America, and I don't remember it anywhere, any writer touching up on it. Alright, so all the way in the back after issue number 50, which is Dan Jurgen's final issue, we have this awesome note up here. The following three issues, though not written by Dan Jurgens, were published between Mark Wade's and Dan Jurgens' run and have been included here for completeness sake. Else, yes. Uh, these are the books that um, I brought to Marvel's attention. And I'm like, is there any way that we can add them in here? Some of them are collected in trade paperback, and I know a lot of completists want to upgrade the trade paperback. And they did. They put it in here. Uh, the price of this also went down from $125 to $100. So that's really cool. No, no, that's not really cool. That's really awesome. I'm so glad that they included it in here. As a guy that wants everything, in, you know, every issue collected, nothing left out, I appreciate things like this. Even though Tom DeFalco's story, which really should have started this omnibus, is all the way in the back. But I'm okay, because I respect the fact that this is a Dan Jurgens collection. Uh, so the book has 880 pages, so here is the DeFalco, Ron Friends. Of course, they've been working for years together on Thor, Spider-Girl, just to name a few. But this is just a basic fight with the Absorbing Man and Crossbones. Uh, as far as the extras, you do have the script to the Nuff Said issue, which is issue number 50. And then you have some original artwork back here. All right, let's look at the binding. 880 pages, here's what your eye looks like. So there's plenty of splash pages. I always love that facial expression there drawn by Kubert when Steve is getting dogpiled. And lots of spread pages. So you do get minimal gutter loss. Not very much, honestly. I don't think it's... It, it's not enough to bug me, but I know, you know, I want to point out that uh, you do have a little bit of gutter loss. Just showcasing another page here so you can kind of see what it looks like, the spread pages. But that, as they say... Is that if you're interested in purchasing this book don't forget to check out our sponsor this episode is sponsored by cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service check out the bargain deals for up to 90 percent off cover price cgn is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders they're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases cgn is currently running a special promotion for your minties if you're a first-time customer let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is valid for u.s customers only cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and that was the content the page count and the build of this omnibus let me know in the comments down below if you're picking it up if you've never read it if you're upgrading from your trade paperbacks if you've read them in single issues what you thought of the stories if you're a fan of dan jurgens what's your favorite dan jurgens comic again this was the young kenny omar leave all those comments down below don't forget to hit like subscribe ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live we are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. If you can do so, thank you so much to our existing patrons. Couldn't make videos like this possible without you all. And more importantly, everyone, please stay healthy. Stay safe out there. Much love.